I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp, I will play to you. I will sing a new song. New song. Again and again in the book of Psalms, it speaks of a new song to sing to the Lord. Now, what does that mean? Uh, There was a praise leader who said that he would not use any songs that were not written in the last decade. He gave himself a 10-year window. What was the reasoning for that? Because a new song? Well, he never mentioned the Bible. Actually, when he gave any kind of reason at all, although he, he thought it was obvious, he wanted to be current. He wanted to be relevant. I think we need a thicker, a better reason to keep a 10-year window. And a new song here doesn't simply mean new. When you read verses like this that you might, you know, just, just on the surface level take to heart, oh, I got to sing a new song, I got to learn a new song, I got to write a new song. That would be the application. Let's read it in context. What does he say? I will sing a new song to the Lord. Oh, by the way, this is 144. (laughs) Psalm 144, verse 9. Psalm 144, verse 9. I will sing a new song to you, O God. On the ten-stringed harp, I will play to you. Uh, You can say six-string guitar. (laughs) Why not? Who gives victory to kings, who rescues David, his servant, from the cruel sword. It is for victory, new events of victory that God gives. Here it speaks of God giving victory to David, and this psalm is born out of the experiences of God's victory in David's life, but Of course, it could be and it must be applied to David's uh, greater son, King Jesus. His victory is forever new. His victory, from the perspective of this psalm, of course, is definitely new. It came many, 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 many years later. And Jesus accomplished this victory, this new victory. And so we can sing of the cross now. David couldn't sing of the cross We sing of the cross now. All right. But the cross is not within the last 10 years. It was 2,000 years ago. So, does it have to be a new song to be a new song? Again, read the verse in context. Verse 12. May our sons in their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the structure of a palace. It speaks of coming generations. Coming generations, our sons and our daughters. Verse 15, blessed are the people who, to whom such blessings fall. Blessed are the people whose God is the Lord, Jehovah, King Jesus. Blessed are the people who know the Lord. And you are the people who know the Lord. And so this song, even though when David wrote it was new. He says, sing this new song. He is giving it to his sons and daughters, to the sons and daughters of Israel, to be sung for generations to come. A new song that is sung for generations to come. Jesus died on the cross 2,000 years ago and rose again from the dead and gave us this victory. And thousands of years later, we are still singing that new song. But we are singing it in renewed ways. In renewed ways. The New Testament passage that I think of when I look at this is uh, Romans chapter 8 once again. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. When we look at the cross and what Jesus has accomplished, what shall we say to these things? We are more than conquerors. All the obstacles the Lord, thro- the Lord allows, all the obstacles thrown in our way by the enemy are meant to be food for us. And these are opportunities for fresh victories. Maybe there are areas of sin in your life that have been a plague to you, that have stunted your growth in the Lord, or so it seemed. It has been a constant struggle your entire life. But what have you learned from that struggle? You have learned to lean upon the Lord. 
You have learned to find in Him your sufficiency. You have learned to find in Him your bedrock. And that's where you and I must meet. We must drive into the grace of God deeper and deeper and deeper in. And the more that we experience His grace-filled salvation, the more we can share it with one another and extend it to each other. Let's do that. We don't minimize sin by doing this, but we do cover each other with grace so that we might grow. And those sins can be overcome, just as there are also other many lifelong habits that the Lord has delivered you from. Stumbling blocks with which you, you thought you would struggle your entire life, but God delivered you. For some of you, that's an illness that people said would be terminal, but it's not, because you de experienced deliverance from the Lord. Blood-bought deliverance. Blood-bought deliverance, not simple deliverance. Blood-bought deliverance. Because of Jesus' blood, you have a relationship with God, and now that deliverance is not merely physical, it's reflective of the eternal healing that you have in Jesus. So we always have a, a reason to sing in a renewed fashion. So, new song. Very practically, how does it apply to us? Does the house have a 10-year window? <laughs> no, absolutely not. But we are committed to singing new songs, songs that we newly discover. You know, um, yes, I want to sing the current songs, and they are rich, and yes, they are up applying. The same gospel is being applied to a new generation. We ought to sing those new songs. These are reflective of the new works of salvation and victory that Jesus is giving. But also, we should sing the old songs in a renewed way. Uh, new old songs in a renewed way. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Feel the words of that song now. That song is renewed. Yes, put new melody on there. There are a few versions of those words. There's nothing wrong with that. Make them more current, sure. But even if you sing the old melody, let it be new to you. Let it be renewed in you. Loved ones, how do we sing a new song when we come to the Lord? I pray that the atmosphere of, of our worship will be renewed with a vigor. When you come to worship the Lord, that it will be like you're meeting Him for the first time. You anticipate your meeting with Him. I will approach preparing message for you, messages for you in that same way, so that reflecting on those messages, your salvation might be ever new, and so that we might always be singing new and renewed songs and teaching our children to sing them too. Let's pray. Lord, you bowed your heavens and you came down. You came down in the person of your son and you did a new thing. Oh, the majesty and the mystery of the wisdom of God in that you sent your only son to accomplish our salvation and we will forever be singing the love of the cross in a renewed way. Oh Lord, let today be such a day. The song that follows from this meditation, let it be renewed. Let us sing it with a renewed vigor. Let it never be halfway or past tense. Let it be current, new, and renewed. All of us with hearts fed and on fire. You deserve nothing less. Blessed are the people whose God is King Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Everything has changed since my sins were forgiven. Everything has changed since I knew the Lord. Now my feet are walking the pathway to heaven. All the guilty past now is under the war blood. Everything is changed, praise the Lord. Now I am redeemed through the blood. Free from condemnation, God is my salvation. Everything is changed, praise the Lord. Everything is 
change to God's name be the glory. Light instead of darkness fills my soul. Everything is changed is the blessed old story. Trust in Christ, I'm now every whit made whole. Everything is changed, praise the Lord. Now I am redeemed through the blood. Free from condemnation, God is my salvation. Everything is changed, praise the Lord. Everything is changed since my spirit possessed me. Since he filled my heart with the Savior's love. Since he took away all the fears that distressed me, help me set my heart on the things above. Everything is changed, praise the Lord. Now I am redeemed through the blood. Free from condemnation, God is my salvation. Everything is changed, praise the Lord.